Well, good evening, all. I wrap Stein, and here we are with your financial market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the evening of Tuesday, and we're at the second of April, twenty twenty four. Just getting on to six p.m. Central Daylight Time. Well. As I said last night to you, and as is happening, I said you're going to be getting all week long jobs reports. This is the week where you focus on one thing, jobs data. So today we had the jolts report, the jobs, the labor turnover, where it's all at. And instead of the amount of jobs that employers are offering out there, they went up. Going up is not a sign of weakness. Another thing that's happening, you're not getting a lot of labor turnover. Now, some people will say, well, that's not inflationary. You're right. For wages, it's not necessarily inflationary because the wage gains have been seen. You're not reading in the papers anywhere that I am other than like Japan and other countries where they're giving big raises. State of California today did take up fast food workers to $20 an hour. Just think about that. Those kids are bringing home $3,000 a month, you know, before taxes. But that's what's going on. So you're getting it at the lower levels, but you're not getting it the mid and the upper levels. That is not taking place because it's taken place. So people are holding on to their jobs longer as they're going, hmm, if I start jumping around, what am I really accomplishing? I'm not putting that in my pocket necessarily. Well, if I hate my job, I'll jump. But if I don't hate it and I just got this one or I've been in it and I love it and I'm well paid, they're not moving. And that's important. So did this spur the idea that the Fed's going to race to the wall and cut interest rates? Absolutely not. You need weak reports to say that. You need to get some weak, if you will, labor data, and we'll see if we get it. Now, tomorrow they're looking on the ADP numbers. I'll bring this up so you can get an idea of it. ADP's right here, and they're looking for about 155,000 jobs. We'll also get mortgage numbers in the morning. We'll get the final March service sector from S&P Global. And then we'll get from the Institute of Supply Management their service sector indices for March. But I think the big report's going to be ADP, and Challenger Gray will be there. you got to dig a bit for it on corporate layoffs. So they higher and lower, where are they going to be? But 140,000 was the job number last time from ADP. So the early projection, there's no guarantee that it'll come out this way, is looking for 155,000. In the stock indices for the week so far, we are down 0.93%. So to me, that's important, okay? We're not at a 2% break in the market. We haven't had one recently. We could get there with this. And as I told traders, I think that people I know like me, I, I had a shopping list of things that I wanted my clients to uh, potentially buy this morning. Some of that list did get hit and filled. Okay, uh, I'm trying not to buy, if you will, the rally, but the pullback. Is the market now oscillating in here? Well, just look at the chart yourself. Let me cover this part of it. I think you'd agree, back and forth oscillation right here. The pattern is one of a higher high and a lower low. Where do I think the battleground's gonna be? How often do you hear me say that often the markets go to the 18-day average to fight a battle? Just take a look and you don't have to agree with me, but I think that the chart speaks for it better than I do. Could the market go down? It could, but the battleground where the market stopped and where it's at tonight, you can't argue that as I'm recording this. It's right at that 18 day average and that's the battle now for direction. Where's the market been stopping? the upper Bollinger Band. So when markets go up and they're hitting that band, the hardest thing for a trader to do is understand the importance of that and take some money off the table to buy the market on the pullbacks. Because you changed today and you made a change and we should look at that change. Here is the change that has just taken place. You've now gotten to the pattern where you've broken the pattern of higher lows. You started breaking it with this outside day down here. And then when you took out the high the next day, it set itself up for a potential test of the upper Bollinger Band, which we did that potential test uh, yesterday. And today is the markets, and by the way, then you had another outside day to the downside. Outside days are super important. 
They're one of the neatest trade tools that there are for getting an idea where markets might be pausing or a continuation pattern. To me, that was a pause pattern yesterday. And you pulled back today and tonight you're just sitting like that. But you're no longer in that easy uptrend. You've stepped out of it. Momentum-wise, you were overbought and you're correcting an overbought condition. In the NASDAQ, you've been in a pattern of lower highs and lower lows, but a difficult one. Let, let me again show you the market that gave me the, the idea that where the problems were coming in. On this day, which was yesterday, we had an outside day up. If the lows of the outside day are taken out the next day or two, I have rules for it and the rules are a minimum, you're going back to the closest main moving average, which is exactly what the market's done, and you're pretty well fighting your battle there. You could sink to the 18,105 level, or you could fight a battle against that number for a while. You've stepped out of the uptrend, and if you were to say which way is the trend right now, it's down, but it's not a clean down. And because of that outside day and the fact that the high took out a prior swing line high, sort of one of these funny looking charts. In the, and let's take this one, in the micro mini, and let me get to it, this is so important. Yesterday, you had a huge outside day down. Remember what I said, it's a continuation pattern or a pause in a trend. That's a pause pattern. Until you go back through that high, you're looking for the potential that the market wants to fight a battle at the 18-day average for direction. And that's pretty much what the market's doing. It is not trending. It's got a higher high, a lower low, and it's corrected past tense and overbought condition. Momentum's pointing down. If it wants to fall apart, the lower Bollinger Band. If it wants to fight the battle for direction, I think the 18-day average will be it. In the Russell, what did we do? And I'll, I'll repeat this again. Here we go, on the first. You'd been making patterns of higher high, now you get the down. In order to say that, no, this is a false pattern, you gotta go through that high. If you don't, the odds favor, because it was in an uptrend, that the market's going to try to pull back, potentially, to the 18-day average to fight a battle exactly what I think is going on. If it wants to sink, the Bollinger Band's the next support. If it wants to fight, it's going to be around, I think, that 18-day average. In the 10-year notes, you had a continuation pattern. It created lower highs, lower lows in the outside day. And now, as you're approaching the lower Bollinger Band, this is where I think pros do some short covering. You're oversold. And if you hit that band, that's where I think they're starting to yank. You did not have that pattern in the five year. You have a higher high, lower low, no outside days. You don't always get an outside day, but they are so important. They come in at key spots on charts and they have a tendency, in my opinion, to catch people, especially those that don't know how to work with them. In the dollar, we have been going up, but what's stopping the rally is when you're hitting the upper band, you stay on typically the right-hand side. So far, we've had no news that says pick up and run, but I think on the pullbacks, because you have an embedded reading where the yellow and the blue lines that make up the slow stochastic are sideways now over the 80 level, they're embedded, I think you'll get buying on the breaks in the market. When you lose that reading, out you go. Are we gonna see the euro embed? It looks like it to the downside. So the dollar up, this down. Remember, the euro in the index makes up 59.6% of the dollar index. So you never want to be in the euro and the dollar at the same time. It's, you know, trade one or the other. If you want to cut back and not be an exact uh, point for point, dollar index. If you want to just play the euro, go to the euro. But having both positions on to fight each other, now it's like you're just to an extent doubling up, to a degree. In the British pound, the battle has been the 100-day average. The market got down to the Bollinger Band and that number, fought there for four days. Now it has fallen back in arguing its battle against the lower Bollinger Band and the 200-day average. At the same time, it is trying to develop an embedded reading. If it develops it, 
down you go and probably through the 125 level. So this is a very important time frame in the market. You cannot count these two numbers as embedded because that's Wednesday. When you go to Tuesday, they were both embedded. When you go the day before on Monday, they were. Were they on Friday? No. Both numbers are not under 20. So tomorrow's the key day in that market. I'll be all over it watching it very closely. Then we get to the reactions in Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin's getting a bit of a price break right here. If you take a look and you go back a couple of days, today it was down 5.5%, and the day before it was down 1.6%. So we haven't even had a 10% correction yet, but this market does these type of breaks regularly. All right, it, it's just the way that it goes. This could be a $60,000 market, a $75,000 market. It swings in big random patterns. When you look at June Brent versus June WTI oil, it is favoring the Brent. The differential is simply Brent is higher priced than WTI. It's how much of a difference. And the higher it goes, the stronger to me the Brent is getting over WTI, you have your bullish embedded reading. It's all systems go. The world is nervous that when Israel uh, went into Syria and killed three Iran generals, especially one of the head ones that facilitates so much in Syria, uh, that a line could have been crossed. I don't know. Why would, you know, a rational person's going to say, well, let me understand this. There's a line crossed because Iran could give money to Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and they can give them arms and do all this, but you don't cross that line. They're okay to do that. What does Israel do? If it strikes them, that's not the same. So they went into a country and they hit it. What's wrong is they hit a diplomatic building. I mean, Diplomats, in theory, are supposed to have a, a free ride. But if you're doing war planning in that building, the argument is you've taken away the immunity. That's what I read. Do I know? I don't know. When I take a look at the May, you can see where you're at. You can see where you're at here. We'll see if anything goes with that. In the gasoline market, we had that washout. And the market has come back and it may re-embed and that means traders will start buying it again. Obviously, if crude's going up, people get nervous about summertime and spring driving, don't you think? And prices will start creeping. I mean, we're all going to be listening to the AAA in America gas prices in your local community. Here's, here's your gas buddy prices and, and away you go. I know it. You know, it's all going to start right away. Natural gas, as I told you, I think the market is trying to forge a bottom right here. It has not thrown out the signal on a chart that a bottom has been formed. It has thrown out a signal that the downtrend is paused. That's what I've got so far. I'm waiting to see if you're going to get more of a signal out of this. And we talk about that all the time in the mornings when I do my videos. Now, outside days, you heard me show you, you saw me show how many, and I talk about them all the time. Do you know how to work with them? They happen on charts, be it futures, uh, ETFs, spiders, stocks, they're all over the place. Are they a continuation pattern, a pause pattern? What are they? How do you recognize them? What do you do with them? How do you know where they're being violated that maybe it's saying, ah, you've paused in a trend, but now how does it get violated? And the violation in itself says, ah, you're gonna move another way. You get my research with the course. You get access to the spider and the ETF videos if you haven't gotten a subscription. You get our charting software. It can either be Lynn Charts or our QT platform if you haven't used either one. We make sure you get something to work with as best as we can. It's a short course. You'll knock it off on a weekend. You'll see it on chart after chart and work with it from that way. It's at irapstein.com under the word, what do you think it is? Education, you got it. And it's up here if you move your cursor, go to the word education. Well, it's an icon, it'll take you right into that area and away you go. I'm Ira, I'll catch up in the morning with you. Let's see what the new set of jobs numbers on ADP and Challenger Gray have to say. Take care.